Welcome to Kevin's chat room. Today, I'm going to take you on to a special campus tour and show you what my school, the University of Florida, is like. I'm going to visit a few main locations that I frequently visit, and I'm going to put the timestamps here so you can jump to whichever one you like. And at the end, I'm also going to talk about some of my thoughts of just staying here for two years. As you can tell, I'm a UF 2022. So I came here 2018, and this is my second year here at UF. I'm going to my junior year. So let's get started. Welcome to the swamp, the home of the Gators. The atmosphere during game day is great. Everyone's so hyped. Families and alumni come from outside of the states. People come from all over the places to experience the Gator spirit. So the stadium is not just for football. As you can see, a lot of people are running, doing their exercise. It's open during a regular hour, so people would like to run stadium. You can see when weather is very nice, a lot of people tend to come out and do their exercise here. Speaking of exercise, we do have two pretty good sized gyms, but since they're closed right now, I can't take you there. But I'll circle them uh, on the map so you can see where it is. If you love football, UF is like dream come true. If you don't know a whole lot about football, you are definitely gonna learn a new thing or two. But if you hate football, let me just tell you the dining hall is gonna be crowded and the rows are gonna be congested on Saturdays. Sorry about that. Jokes aside, you gotta come and experience what it's like to be a Gator. And when this whole stadium is filled with people, it, there's just something that you can't express. It's something you feel. And especially when it's an afternoon game, it's the best because it's not this bright. So my phone actually overheated and stopped recording. Let me just finish what I was saying. You gotta come and experience the game when it's uh, during the evenings, because it's not gonna be as hot, as bright, and yours is gonna be a little more comfortable. Every time a Gator scores, there's actually gonna be fireworks at a stadium, and when it's dark, it's just easier to see and more fun to experience. So you gotta come during one of those evening games and experience a totally different atmosphere. So that has been the stadium. Let's go to our next stop. So this is where I stayed during my freshman year at UF. Uh, it's called Hume Hall. And now I guess it's a good time to talk about all the different residence halls and housing options. But let me just show you what Hume Hall looks like from the outside, of course. I can't really go inside, but there are still a lot to uh, check out from the outside. So this is the common area. Uh, this is where you get all your mails, all your deliveries. Well, office closed, pretty sad. And if you turn to the left, there's a study area right here where people can hang out and chill without leaving their uh, residential area. And on, and on this side, we have mail where you get all your letters and coupons and all those good stuff. And this is one of the most important things for a college student, the laundry room. I've never done laundry in a public area where you need to drop off your clothes, come back, and like pay with a credit card or even coins sometimes because the credit card wouldn't work, but it's pretty fun. And to be honest, I've had to dump someone's clothes out from the dryer because I need to use the dryer and all the dryers are taken and they were not coming back to collect their clothes. So just listen here, set a timer if you're on to do laundry and come and pick your clothes up because someone is going to remove it if they are in a rush. So. I apologize to the person who I took the clothes out, but... So on this side is where I live, Hume East. Well, I don't think I can go inside right now, but let me just show you a few things. But this is where you would come out and dump your trash. That's right, I'm gonna show you everything, every detail when I was living here. Right here, this is where you dump your trash. And this is a little parking lot that comes, comes in handy if your friend wants to pick you up. But it's illegal to park here, but they can just park temporarily. But over there, you can see there's a parking lot. That's one of the other convenient thing about Hume Hall is there are a lot of parking lots in the area. So you can park here, you can park across the street. So let's talk about housing a little bit. There are so many on-campus housing options here at UF, and there are so many different layout options as well. Actually, I'm going to put all the useful links I talk about in the description below. So Hume, the layout is a suite style, uh, which means you, you and your roommate live in the same room. And there's a bathroom that connects to two other people. So four people share a bathroom, but you only share 
the, your room with another person. And I really liked it. And all the beds, you can lift it up or lower it. I lowered mine just because I've always been used to lower beds. But you can lift it as high, well not as high as you want, but pretty high up if you want that. So you can have some storage room down below. And one of the bonuses is our room actually had a sink inside our bedroom. When your roommate or your suite mate is taking a shower, you can still have access to water. You can still wash your face, brush your teeth, water your flower. So I would say that's a pretty big bonus. So if you're thinking about living on campus, definitely go check out the housing website. And if you need to talk to someone, definitely call them. That's one of the best things I found at UF is if you ever have any questions, there's always someone you can talk to, some human being you can connect with. And most of the time, they're going to help you figure it out. But if they can, they're definitely going to find someone who can figure it out for you. So if you have questions, definitely call someone, email them, text them, Snapchat them. Never mind, don't, don't, don't do that. Call them for sure. It's going to be helpful. All right, so this has been our short housing tour. Let's go to our next stop. All right, so this is the Rice Union. And this is actually the only one place I can find on campus that is open right now. So we're gonna go inside and check it out. But before that, I'm gonna put on my mask because there's a sign there saying it's recommended to wear face masks. And I don't want anyone to be scared just because I'm not wearing a mask. All right, we're ready to go. All right, since it's so quiet in there and there are actually people there studying, I didn't want to talk in there so they would think I'm someone crazy. So I'm just gonna go find a place over there uh, and talk about the whole walkthrough of the Rice Union. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about what just happened back there. So there was a change of plans. I was gonna go from the bookstore and then come up to the Rice Union, but unfortunately the bookstore was closed. I, I thought it was open, but the good thing is I had some footage from earlier, so I'll still show you what the bookstore is like. So there are two levels at the bookstore. The first floor you can get your textbooks, gadgets, trending novels, backpacks, whatever you want. And the second floor, there's all kinds of merch, um, like UF shirt or any gator gears you can get from the second floor. So this is the lake where I actually saw my first gator here at UF. I don't think we're gonna see anything here today. And other than gators, there are also tortoises and probably fish. And I have no idea how they get in here or how they can get out. But I'm just telling you, I've seen a gator here swimming. There are like five different entrances if you don't count the secret ones. And it's really easy to get lost, to be honest. It's okay to ask for directions. No one's gonna think you're silly or anything like that. Everyone's been very helpful. If you don't know how to get to a certain place, just ask. So this structure is called the Rights Union. And I've heard people call it so many different things. Ritz Union, Ritz Onion, the Union. But now you know, it's the Rights Union. So the Rights Union is truly a multi-purpose structure. It has a lot of different things. It's a student activity center. It also has the welcome center. It's also a hotel. It's a place for food and it hosts a lot of different events at the ballrooms. So this is the ground floor. Sorry if the video looks like a first person shooting game. I, don't, I didn't know it's gonna jitter that much, but just bear with me. So there are a lot of chain restaurants here in the Rice Union. Wind Zone is one of them and I'm gonna show you more later on. And this is the barber shop. It's where I cut my hair. And my barber told me he actually also cuts the president here. So just so you know, I share the same barber with the president of UF. And now we're approaching game room. Uh, the game room has uh, bowling, pool, uh, ping pong table, fuse ball, a lot of fun things. And you can also just come in here and eat your lunch or just hang out with your friends. You don't have to pay to get in. You just, you have to pay to play the games, but you don't have to pay to get into the structure. And as you can see here, we have a subway, more food, and a pot market. Pot market is kind of like a convenience store here at UF. If you ever forgot to pack your lunch or if you just want to get a snack, this is the place to go. And we're approaching the bike shop. This has been a lifesaver for many times because I used to have a bike uh, my first year and it's free if it's just uh, to patch a tire or something that doesn't 
need any resources. But if you need to replace your tire or get a lock or things like that, you have to pay. But if it's just regular service or repair, it's uh, totally free of charge. So these meeting rooms are actually for students. If you're with a student work, you can reserve it. And it's totally free of charge. You can use it for group meeting, recruitment, or just hang out with your friends. So this is like the room of requirement in Harry Potter. If you ever need a room, just go onto the Rice Union website and reserve the room from the student org. There are many other fun things here at the Rice Union. As you can see, there's a free library. People can just drop off their books. Or if you just want to take a little break from your study, you can sit here and read a few books. And this is where I hit my skateboard. So hopefully when I come back, it's still there. There are many different services here at the Rice. Uh, you can see we pass through Gatorwell, and there's also a career center. Uh, it's really nice to see they're still operational online and available to students. And now I'm going to show you a few places for food here at the Rites. And of course, there's Starbucks. There are at least eight or nine Starbucks here on campus. So if you like coffee, good for you. And this is where I would have come up if the bookstore was open. So the bookstore is connected to the Rice Union. And there's a lot of spaces for people to eat their lunch. Now you can see we have a lot of chain restaurants, Papa John's, Wendy's. And this is where we were at the pond. Now we're going up the stairs to the second floor. And we call this staircase the Harry Potter stairs. I'll show you different angles. Yeah, you can see it's kind of floating in the air. It's kind of like magic. So my phone actually overheated and stopped recording again. So I apologize. I'm just going to use the audio file from earlier. And you can, you'll still be able to see the rights, but you will not be able to see me here talking to you. Sorry about that. So at the second floor, we have the Student Activity and Involvement Center. If you ever want to find a student organization, there are many different ways you can do it. You can either do it online, do a search. Uh, there's like a database. I'll put a link in the description. But you can also go into the center and talk to a real person, and, and they will give you a personalized plan geared towards your interest. And now we're approaching the Grand Ballroom. Uh, there are two big ballrooms here at UF, and this is a huge space. You can either divide it into different sections or use the entire space for a, a pretty big gathering like orientation or some big events. And this is the new engineering building. There's already a building called the new engineering building on campus, but I guess I don't know what they're going to call them, the new new engineering building. And this is actually the first time I've seen it almost done. So I'm excited to see what it's like when it's finished. Now we're using the elevator and heading down to the lower level. There are not a lot of things in the lower level. I'm just gonna talk about a few highlights. So there's the Arts and Craft Center. I actually painted mug here. Well, it's not a masterpiece, but I would say it's not too bad. And straight down the hall, there's the printing room. It's currently closed and there are a few students uh, studying over there. I don't wanna go disturb them. Every year of students has access to, I think, 200 free prints. It's been pretty helpful my first year. So now we're heading up to the ground floor. Well, I actually never noticed the two LED panels actually form a waterfall. It's pretty cool. So that's been our short tour of the Rice Union. Let me show you our next stop, the French fries. This is the french fries. I don't know what you think they look like, but we call it the french fries. So you have to go with it. It's tradition, right? So this building right behind me is the Marston Science Library. I showed you the other day Library West, and this is the other library I was talking about. It's a pretty big library. It has, uh, I think, five floors. And the more you go up, the quieter you need to be. I've personally never borrowed a book from the library, which is what they're used for, but but let's not talk about that. So people will come here to do homework. And the library actually has a lot of pretty cool features. It has a 3D printer, which you can send your print and they can print it for you. But they do charge it by the gram of the material you use. But you can also loan a smaller 3D printer from the library and they will give that to you free of charge. They can ev they'll even give you a free roll of filament. And they also have a lot of cool gadgets like the HoloLens, Google Glasses. Uh, I've borrowed both of them, by the way. It's just fun to play around. And they also have screwdrivers, extension cords, uh, video gears. I would probably borrow some <laughs> if, if they're not close right now. Uh, they're physically close right now, but I do believe the, their website is operational. Another pretty cool thing about library is this database. Although I've never borrowed a book here, 
but I've used their database frequently, and it's a great resources that you can use. Right next to the library is the Turlington Plaza and the Century Tower, which I'll take you to there later on. I've heard that Turlington Plaza has more foot traffic than the front entrance of the Disney Park. I'm not sure if it's real, but I choose to believe it. Because in between classes, you'll see crazy amount of people in Turlington Plaza. And it's also one of the free speech zones here on campus. You'll see people handing out flyers or some events or, uh, or people from off campus here to either protest or demonstrate or things like that. So it can definitely get crowded and noisy at times. If you're ever going to come onto a campus tour at UF, they're for sure going to take you to the Century Tower. And there are a lot of fun facts and corny jokes. I think I'm not going to reveal everything to you and uh, leave some mysteries. All right, that's been the Mars 10 Science Library. Let's go to our next stop. Who am I kidding? I just have to tell you all I know about the Century Tower. So Century Tower is actually an instrument. Students can go up there and play it. I don't know how you can get access to it, but it would be pretty cool to go up there and actually play the Century Tower. So before Century Tower was a bell, it used to be a museum. But interestingly, this building has no elevator and no air conditioning. So it's really hot in the summer times and no one's willing to go up there and enjoy the art pieces. So they moved all the artworks to another museum now we call the Har Museum. And this became a bell tower. Another joke I've heard about, this is gonna be bad, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. Every time an engineering student gets a date, a brick falls out of the sentry tower. And that's why it's still standing tall. I know, it's bad. Let's move on. Another interesting one to talk about is recently I discovered that it's really difficult to find a bathroom here on campus now that everything's shut down. So I'll show you some footage of the Rice Union from earlier that even on the inside, it's really hard to find a bathroom because everything seems to be locked. And I was thinking there are bathrooms on campus that are not indoors, they're outside. So I was, I was trying to see if I could get into those bathrooms. And I was totally excited at first because I saw those little lights from the gap, from the bottom gap of the door. Uh, and I thought, wow, maybe the bathroom's open. And I uh, walked towards it. I opened, I tried to open the door and it was unlocked and there's lights in there. I was so happy and I entered the door and this is what I saw. The toilets are gone, the sinks are gone. There's, there's nothing there. I, I, I really don't understand why, why they did that. They probably just want to do some maintenance, but they could have just locked the door. Uh, false hope is the worst. All right, so this is our last stop, the Plaza of Americas. This is where I shoot my previous videos. So if you wanna see what the Plaza of America is like, go check out that video. So what we toured today doesn't even scratch the surface of how big UF is. I'm gonna put a map to show you what we toured and how big UF actually is. So when I first came to the campus, I think it was in April uh, of my senior year in high school, I was amazed at how big the campus is and how many people there actually are. It's a pretty big campus. But everyone was very friendly and every time we asked them a question and if we got lost, they stopped what they were doing and they answered us. So that gave me a warm sense of feeling about this place and, and I would say that's the moment that I felt like UF might be the place to go. So let me talk about all the other things that is not just buildings and classrooms and stuff like that. The first thing I wanna talk about is involvement. There are definitely a tons of student organizations here on campus and it can be overwhelming at times, but they can also be very beneficial. For example, I met one of my best friends at a student organization meeting and the things I've learned from being in a student org or uh, being in a leadership position cannot be taught from the classroom. It's, it's part of the college experience, people say. I would recommend no matter what schools you're in, definitely check out their student organizations and see if there's something you're interested in doing. And if you have a specific interest and UF doesn't have any student orgs to cover that, you can start your own student organization. And the process is, is not that complicated. Uh, it's all in the website. Uh, there are a lot of websites and I feel like they're the best place to go for resources. Just like I talked about, if you ever need any help, call someone, look up their website. It's always the best way to solve the problem. So now I want to talk about something 
that's called toxic involvement culture. Nowadays, a life of a college student can be pretty difficult. You have your schoolwork, you have your student orgs, you have a job, you, you have to apply for graduate school. There are a lot of things on our plates. And sometimes it can feel like we're doing everything just for that resume. We are not participating in something because we like it or because we enjoy doing it. Sometimes it feels like we were doing it for the sake of doing it or for the sake of the resume, for the sake of look better. For example, I was constantly in this state of mindset my first year. I was trying out everything. I didn't want to get behind. I didn't want to uh, come into my last year of college and look back and say, I didn't really do anything. So with this mindset, I really try to push myself to, to find as many student works as I can, to participate in as many activities as I can. But towards the end of my freshman year, I was burned out. It's my first year and I, I was already burned out. I was like, no one is sincere. Everyone's fake and everyone's for themselves. With this mindset, I was too tired to do any of these. That was a pretty dark time period of my college experience. But involvement is not always like that. You can find something you truly enjoy. And I would urge you to do something because you enjoy doing it, not because not like what I did because I want to boost up my resume. It's just, it's just not worth it. My suggestion is definitely don't be afraid to try new things and, and explore, but just don't do everything at the same time. And if you do, it's okay. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone and it's okay to make mistakes as part of growing up. I don't want to sound like I'm preaching or something, but I just want to tell you that it's okay to mess up and you're going to grow from it. Now that we talked about involvement, another thing I want to address is academics. Of course, we're here to study, we're here to be a student. So what is academics like at UF? So last time I checked uh, US News, UF is ranked top seven public universities here in the US. And from what I understand, UF is trying to strive for top five to even top one. Uh, I don't know what their big plans are. So what I've experienced is they're trying to get small class size. So for example, a class I took earlier, statics uh, for engineers, uh, it's a pretty big classroom and it's an online or traditional format. You can go to class, you can watch lectures online, but the professor is talking to a big classroom of students. But now uh, I was the last group of students who did that. So now they have small classroom, 12, 20 people in a class and professor doing lectures that way. So that could be a change that you see. So although it's a huge university, they, you will probably take classes. Actually, the classroom right here I'm gonna show you is a chemistry building. Uh, this classroom can hold maybe two, 300 people. You will take classes like that, but you'll also very likely take classes that are more like high school well, with 20 people in your classroom. What I can experience is academic can be difficult and stressful even sometimes. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a perfect student, I definitely got A's, B's, and even a couple of C's. So I'm just like everyone else. But for most classes, as long as you put your effort into it, ask for help, uh, go to office hours, do homework with your peers, things like that. And definitely find out your study strategy. That's very important. It's different for everyone. My issue was I didn't find it in time and probably still don't have, have it straight, but it's a process. Definitely find your study strategy. It's gonna help you in the long term. Maybe I'll do a separate video on study strategy if you're interested. So now we got academics out of the way, I want to talk about dining. I wish I could show you the dining halls here on campus, but since they're closed, I can't really go inside. But I'll definitely show you once they're opened. As I showed you earlier, there are many chain restaurants, Wendy's, Subway, Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, good stuff uh, here on campus. So there are a lot of options but we also have meal plans and dining centers. Of course, I'll put a link to the website. You can, you can check out the meal plan. My first year, I bought the meal plan. It's pretty handy, because I was staying in the residence hall. Uh, we do have a kitchen, but, and we do have a mini, mini fridge that my roommate brought. But this is hard to, to cook every day with the school and everything going on. So the meal plan comes in very handy if you don't know how to cook or like me, too lazy to cook. Uh, especially during your first year when you're trying to figure out everything else, I would say it's a pretty good option. Last but not least, some fun things to do on campus. 
So we actually have a thing called leisure classes. It's hosted by the Rice Union, uh, it's under their website. You do pay a small fee, but it's not nearly as much as tuition for a class. They have some pretty fun options. I even thought about taking a few of them. It's just my schedule didn't work out. But maybe during my senior year, when I finish all my uh, major classes, I'll try a few. We also have something called the Gator Nights. I actually got my shirt, my class shirt, UF 2020, at the Gator Night. It's probably the first or second Gator Night when you come into UF. So Gator Nights happen every Friday at the Rice Union. They have movie nights, games, entertainment, free food. And one time they even had a huge water slide of a gator outside of the Rice Union. It can get pretty crazy. There's so much more to talk about. It's probably gonna be a two hours long video if I talk about everything that comes up to my mind. So this is just an overview of what UF looks like, what UF feels like, uh, some of my personal thoughts. I'll definitely pick some topics in the future to talk about in depth. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments what topics you're interested in learning about UF. And feel free to leave comments if you have any questions about UF. If enough people ask about it, I'll probably make a video of it. All right, that's been it. Thanks for watching Kevin's chat room. I'll see you in the next video.